Hey, Above Life channel, it's Bridget. Nice to see you. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. I am really excited to do this channeling today. This is an unexpected channeling. Now, as you can see from my Paisley Park shirt, I was thinking of channeling somebody else. However, I am in Seattle, Washington, and today is Sunday, and I happened to have some time, and my sister and I went to Lakeview Cemetery, if you follow me on Instagram, you already saw this. I showed a mini video and I actually live streamed from there on Instagram, Bridget Inspired, visiting the grave of Brandon and Bruce Lee. And it's beautiful. I have never been to such a beautiful memorial. And true, I haven't been out to Hollywood. I have not been out to other famous grave sites, but this was so incredible, the energy. So when we got there, it was around 10 a.m. and the cemetery had been open for an hour and there were quite a few people there. And there was a pretty steady stream of groups of people that would come through. It wasn't a wait or anything, but it was a pretty steady stream of handfuls of people would come through. And I was there for about 40 minutes and it was just profound. And so I want to share that with you a little bit. I'm, I'm really, it's later in the day, it's like 5 p.m. So it's been, what, seven hours since I've been there and I have been changed. The energetics were one of extreme peacefulness, strong empowerment. It was very inspiring, the energetics. And it was mostly from Bruce, like I touched his a monument, the, the marker, the actual book. And I will post a picture of that I have of my hand touching the book on the bottom of his. It's this beautiful black book with gorgeous gold writing on it. And it has a um, beautiful circle symbol of a yin yang. And then it has the um, um, arrows on the sides of it. And a friend of mine who is really into Bruce Lee stuff. She told me that that is his, that is a, a core sign for him, a sign of core. And it was interesting because I was telling her some of my feelings that I had from when I was there and what it felt like for me. And she was like, you're using words that he would use. And I'm like, well, that makes sense because I channel, right? And all the feelings that I had are definitely this just profound connection of peace and passion and harmony, harmonization of the energy of this peacefulness, this calmness, and this kind of intensity, this passionate energy, and the coming together of those. And then it creates this harmonizing vibration, which means we're all both, we're all both shadow and light. We're all both right and we're wrong, right? We, we really are this true balance and it ebbs and it flows and it moves and it's it's fluid and our energies and our pulsing life force energies are we are the center core and maybe that's what it means by being the center of the universe i'm not sure but it just there's so much that i felt being there and it was just incredible it was changing for me i, I really felt i was really um inspired to do my work to be a channel. I really felt just motivated, empowered, um, not motivated, empowered, like just how special, magical it is to be able to feel energy and understand the messaging and just such profound, beautiful connection to, to that which is more than our physical body, but then understand that the physical body is this beautiful temple that we're held in. And as I'm sharing this with you, I'm getting a ringing in my ears and I'm adjusting, the energy is adjusting. And then it just quieted. Okay, so Bruce Lee is here and present energetically. And so I wanna ask him about duality. Because when I looked up the yin yang symbol when we were driving, my sister and I, I was, I was so out of my body. We went to some bakery not too far from there, a couple miles from there. And I was just like, wait, what, what? Like, I didn't know what was going on. Like, I, I was just like, this, I said, this is profound. I, I've never felt like this before. I, I've never felt like 
visiting a cemetery would be so transformative and so unbelievably life affirming and just I'm like I just I can't even I words do not do it justice how it felt and the new understandings now I have access to new wisdom and and so I looked up that symbol like I touched it with my hand and it felt like a button or a key and I've never been drawn to yin yang before until now like this and being like whoa like really understanding the power of that sacred symbol I've never really felt that and I felt it like a button or a key like a push the button and then all of a sudden this energy like I could talk and, and feel the connection and so um, I I felt a lot so he's here and I wanted to ask him about duality because one of the things was is, is about duality or polarity or something duality is the question of course I'm having tea I love tea and I'm having um, green ginger tea and I bought it before and I thought this is a perfect thing to have when I'm talking to Bruce Lee okay so we'll see how he comes in he's really on my left side here the passion that you describe is the energy of integrity it's an integral part of who you are, he says. The life force that is within you is within all. What is in every, um, okay, let's see if I can get the channeling correct here. What you are describing is life. Not the understanding or the balance between life and death, but between life and life. Fullness, living, a life and living a life embodiment 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 honing the skills and the understanding of embodiment he says Bridget you've been on this journey of embodiment you've asked for guidance and specific <laughs> specific I'm gonna use the word Intel but specifics about embodiment and you shall have it and this is part of the transition point for you he says to begin to ask the deeper questions is to then learn how to be patient to receive, to know the answers, to allow them to come up inside from within you, as you well know. But it feels different than it is as it ex is explained. When it is explained and you listen, that's one thing, one level or way of learning, that is one way. You listen, it is explained, you listen, that is one way. But the embodiment is the living of it. The truly in the cells of your being holding the sacredness, that sanctity of the wisdom in the body of the, the vessel of the human being. And then to live that from that place, it will take a great deal of discipline. And at times it will be challenging and there will be struggle and grief and there already has been all of those things and life has those things regardless of what you are doing and, and instead of people feeling as though those are signs of struggle or hardship or challenge is a sign of 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 not non-success or lack of achievement or what mom, some might perceive as failure it is not these shortcomings although in physical terms are very measured being too short, for example, being too, oh my gosh, I don't want to say that. He literally says being too Asian. That's literally what he said. He said, Bruce Lee said being too Asian. There are many things that will become part of your mindset, your landscape. He says your landscape of how you view and see the world. But the way that you move with the energetics of life the way you move with the source of life, the core, that is who you truly are. That is the understanding of the duality, the dual. Mm. He says the two components, there are many, 
there are two primary components. Actually, he's showing me two and four. He's showing me two here and two here. So almost like a compass, like the directions, the components. I think what he's doing is taking that yin yang and he's breaking it out for me like a compass, which is how I match and and respond to energetics. That's how I do it when I'm doing energy work with somebody or when I'm doing like a, an energetic forecast because I do monthly energetic forecast audios for people sometimes. Um, I have some clients that I, I do those things for. And when I do that, I use a compass to move around and organize the month so that there's a pattern and a rhythm to things. So he's literally showing me that he's taking the two of the duality and making it into a balancing thing of four. So the duality, and he says, when you look at the yin yang symbol, it is a lateral energetic and it is a like a, um, a moving, I can want to say horizontal, but it's he's literally going like this. Lateral. Why is he saying lateral flow? Why am I going? I'm going like this and then I'm going like this. So it's literally it's a straight up and down like the spine, like a, a pillar of light, like a, the spine, like the as above, so below energetics, like the soul before it comes into the body and the soul as a human body or the astral plane, the etheric plane, the spiritual plane and realms and the human layers of energetics and understanding of the human body. That, but also then he's showing me this, like this movement, this fluid movement that is like, like water. It's like the flow of water, like waves, but it's also very much, um, yeah, he's just showing me this, um, it's just kind of rocking back and forth. It's kind of rocking back. And almost, you know what it looks like? An infinity sign. Yeah, it looks like an infinity sign. So the up and down and the left and the right. He's showing me the flow and the connection of things, which is interesting because if I think about this and this axis going this way, it's definitely going across. The meridian going across is definitely in in the medicine wheel it is the direction of west and east and west and that is fire and water and it balances out <laughs> and so it's the medicine wheel also that's how i use my energetics with the i overlay the compass because that's a mind thing and the, i go on the um in the clockwise motion i'm going to organize the energetics when i'm looking at a forecast or doing some energetics for somebody for a month or looking at life stuff life cycle stuff um, and then I use the Native American medicine wheel to help honor the, ener the energetics of the elements and balance the natural rhythm and the flow of life and the seasons and such like that. Okay. Anyway, so that's literally showing me like this, like it literally rocking back and forth like this. Like it's just rocking back and forth. It's not going tipping over the edge or anything. It's very much in a rhythmic pattern, but it is moving. It's going back and forth. It's like rocking chair back and forth. He said, it's just, a, it's just movement. It's movement. It's always, you are always moving. So the duality is the movement is, a, um, what are you saying? Synced up, synchronistic. It's, it's synergy, synergetics. He says, it's like synergetics. He says, you are the nucleus. And that energy moves back and forth. And he says, it's not moving to make change or create difficulty, struggle, or strife, it's moving because that is its organic state is in motion. And he's like, it's a soothing mechanic. It's like, you guys, it reminds me of like um, trauma-informed care, rhythmic, repetitive mo movement is how you help to balance the energetics when you have high anxiety or trauma responses, rhythmic, repetitive movement, like sitting on a rocker glider, for example. So that's kind of what it reminds me of, but it's left and right which is also the male female energetics in the body so that layer of being is also present here so okay so so the duality the dual states he says everything there's always at least two choices and then within those two choices there's many choices below that and he says when you peel off the layers of of the falsehoods then there's clarity it's very simple it's not complicated it, but it's dynamic, which makes it seem complicated, but it's not, it's not. When you are at the core and you can see without obstruction, if you are at the core, and it's more of this energy he's showing me, not of seeing with the human eyes, but seeing with the heart eye and seeing with the full heart, the open heart. And that requires embodiment, that requires such a strong partnership with the physical body. 
He did not defy physics, he's like saying. He's saying, I partnered with my body. I knew and trusted the wisdom and the guidance, and that allowed me to conceptually transcend the matter mass piece. And he's saying the inertia, whatever that means, I have no idea. I know that he's like a martial arts guy. I know that he's like, a um, like superhero like and like stuntman like and trained people in Hollywood and all that. I know that. I know that. I know that about him. I know that he developed a certain type of mar martial arts because that's what it said on his gravestone. And I have channeled Bruce Lee before, but I don't recall with my human memory. I, I just don't recall stuff very easily when I'm doing channeling. But he said, um, it really is about feeling and that's how you see he's like you see from the center from the in the core and he's not showing me the guts my stomach he's showing me more like my heart and right in between my heart and my tummy like right here in this inner healer part i call this the inner healer part of the body for some it would be actually considered the solar plexus because it's kind of right here but for me it's the part of the heart and part of the solar plexus which is the inner healer part of who we are that's the place where the core is for him and he shows me very yellow so very soul connected very intuitive very intentional and when I told, so I, I wrote, okay, so there's a couple of things I got to share with you about my experience today. And one is the cherry blossoms. So when I came to Washington state, it's the cherry blossom time. It's, this is April, 2022. I'm recording this. It's April 24th, 2022 to be exact. And the cherry blossoms are in bloom and it's beautiful. And so everywhere you go, there's like trees and I'm like, oh, I gotta take a picture, oh, I gotta take a picture. I've only been here since yesterday, 24 hours, you guys, 24 hours I've been here. And I'm like, oh, 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 taking pictures and stuff everywhere we're going because they're so pretty, the trees are beautiful. They're not great for the allergies, but they're beautiful. And I have a journal, which it's not close at hand, otherwise I'd show you that I brought. And I just gra grabbed it and brought it because it's kind of springtime like. The energy is light pink and it has cherry blossoms on it. And it's a different kind of journal than what I normally would use necessarily because I've been using lots of different kinds of journals and stuff, but the light pink one just kind of seems really light and really kind of dainty, dainty, delicate. And I actually thought I have a friend in mind that I thought, oh, I could send this to. Um, she's going through some stuff and I thought maybe I could send this to her because she just is so like that, really kind and super compassionate and very empathetic, just so nice. I thought, oh, that would be a good gift for so-and-so. And my husband even agreed. He's like, yeah, it would be. And I'm like, um, but I, before I was leaving, I was like, no, I need, I'm going to bring this with me and this is me, my journal. It's got cherry blossoms on it. I did not know they were cherry blossoms. I didn't even think about it. I didn't make the connection. I just said, it's very spring-like and it feels good. I'm going to bring it with me because I'm going to be here for like three weeks. So I'm going to bring it with me. And it's perfect. And then I got here, I'm like, oh my God, these are cherry blossoms. Hmm. <laughs> of course they are. And we were at the cemetery today and I looked up and there was this big cherry blossom tree right there. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, super connected. And I'm like, oh, wouldn't that be a beautiful tattoo? Anyway, um, this beautiful. There's just so much. Okay, so duality, yeah. Yeah, like having peace in the middle. It's like the calm and the storm kind of thing, like the calm and the chaos. And I just did a Sunday morning coffee podcast too today, and I talked. To, it talked about um, changing your perspective and about a little bit about resistance and stuff. Move a little bit, and then things will be different. Things are just different. They, the view's not as obstructed and stuff. Um, okay, so the duality piece is really what I wanted to talk to you about today, Bruce. Do you have anything additional? He's showing me <coughs> dumplings. Oh, sorry, guys. You're going to hear the dogs. <laughs> Shh, guys, quiet. Hey, I'm dog sitting. That's what I'm doing for my sister. <laughs> Shh, Shh. She has some training for work, so she's, she's out. But um, I got two little dogs. Hey, Tucker, come here. Do you want to come up and show up, show up in my video? He just literally said dumplings. Does he like, did he like that kind of stuff? I don't know. I don't know. He just said dumplings. I haven't had dumplings. I don't even know. I don't know. There's a lot of different kinds of um, beautiful, different kinds of food around here where I'm at. Lots of different Asian types of dishes and from all the, um, just, but there's all sorts of stuff. There's like, um, 
there's just a lot of different kinds. We had Vietnamese coffee yesterday. It was so good. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. It was good. And there's like Japanese food. There's eight, all different kinds of Asian food. There's like, um, last time I was here, I had baklava and, um, what else did I have? Baklava and the place across the street with a really good hummus. I can't think of what else I had. What is that? Falafel? Yeah, falafel. That yeah, the little balls of the oh yeah. There's like Mediterranean food. There's just there's oh my gosh, really good sushi and poke bowls. Oh my gosh, so good. And then um, I'm not a big poke bowl fan though. I like sushi though. Um, and oh my gosh, the noodles are so good. The miso soup was amazing today that I had. Oh, it's really good. And spicy noodles, spicy ramen. Oh, so good. Anyway, okay, 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 yeah. I think I'm getting hungry again. I might have to eat my lunch for dinner. Okay, what else is there, Bruce? He says, we're only just beginning to talk, right? So I was writing in my journal. So I went out on the rooftop deck and I was writing in my journal and really reflecting on my experience today. And one of the things he said to me was to just be still, to be still and let the wisdom rise up because it's already there. He's like, it's not necessarily, you guys, about answers or finding the right answer or the right thing for you or making, making a change or forcing a change or making, um, moving from one place to the next. And we're in such a, a time of change, you know? We're getting off of COVID now and trying to find a new way in the world. There's some world events that have happened um, that have transpired, that have disrupted peace and been very traumatic for parts of the world and lots of people that are affected. And then um, there's been physical, like natural disaster kind of stuff. There's been a lot of stuff that's traumatic and really, really um, different. The world, it seems right now, is there's a lot of flipping over of ha changing happening. And it seems kind of abrupt and harsh and rough a little bit. And so the choice to make a change that is peaceful, which would just be spending time in quiet, just being still, like that's what he was telling me. That was his advice. That was his like, not even advice, but instruction. He was like, the wisdom, it comes from within, but it can only come out when you are still, when you are at your core place, which is at this place of peace. It's not you have to become peaceful or get peaceful. It's that you are and you have to be still enough in your body. Because literally, like I had my um, AirPods in. I was gonna listen to, like I could listen to, like I've been listening to a couple different books and I could listen to a podcast or whatever and I'm outside and it's, you know, urban area. So you can hear the traffic a little bit here and there, even though we're up high on the, on, in the building and stuff on the rooftop deck. and. It was a beautiful day too, like 60 degrees. It was really, it was mid 60s. Shh, 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 Hey, quiet. It was mid 60s and it was beautiful. Really sunny in the afternoon, it was gorgeous. So I had to sit outside. But um, he, he just gave me this really strong understanding instruction of just be still. And so I didn't listen to anything. I just sat and I was present. And I was just still. He said, just be still, get really still. until the point when you can literally feel the blood in your body moving. And that's the rhythm. The pulsing of your blood, he's like, that's the life in your body. And all the veins and all the vessels and all the things that have to happen in order for that to occur, it's a, it's a systematic pulsing movement. He said, it's always happening. You don't have to create it. It's always here. It's like the peace and the passion to create the harmonics of the existence that we have. And that's the vibration of the information he brought through. And even when I talk about it in the stillness, I just feel this incredible sense of tranquil. Just, oh, and my heart, I don't even feel, I don't feel any separation. I just feel this wholeness at the center of my body, at my core, I feel this wholeness. And I hope that you can feel that too. And it's like the heart and the soul are like the yin yang, the balancing of the energies. Your heart so empathic, so feeling, so passionate. Your gut, your soul so beyond inspired, so filled with optimism and 
just the purest sense of life and understanding that transcends the human body expression and experience, but yet expresses through the human body. So the mind quiets naturally because the mind wants a break. It doesn't want to always have to be on guard. It wants the stillness. It wants the reflection in toward the body. It wants to, to allow the body to presence the energy of the heart and the soul of what's internal and inside and organic and the rhythmic nature of life. That is what the mind does want. And so this is an opportunity to really understand that, the parts of us and how we work as humans, as spirit in our wholeness. That's the duality, the human expression, and the spiritual expression of who we are. That's beautiful. Mm. It's not just a concept, Bridget. It's not just a concept. I know. That's good. Thank you. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. Gosh, so profound. Oh my gosh, you guys. Wow, that's so great. Okay, so, um, I do need to add so I mean, I represented Minnesota, let me just say again. I wore my Paisley Park t-shirt today. I represented Minnesota. I totally did today. It's like my first 24 hours in Washington State. Yeah. Wow, and I'm gonna be here for like three weeks. This is gonna be great. Hmm. So this is Bridget. Thank you so much for being here on Above Life Channel. I hope that we've inspired your spirit today and filled you with some hope and encouraged you to live your life. This is your life after all, and you get to live it. Live it from your core. Just live it. Thanks for being here.